So, welcome again to another video. I've had this footage for a little while now, and it makes sense to cut it together and put a little video out. So, the context is when I went up to Donington uh, a few months ago, the uh, cooling system quite literally shat itself. So, before we all got locked down in the UK, I went up to Donington with a new setup and I wanted to get used to the car and also get a bit of tuition from somebody who's been uh, been around motorsport for a few years. Up to now the priority has been get a bit of seat time, uh, which I ticked off obviously over the past few years, uh, get the car sorted, which it uh, is reasonably sorted now, um, especially where with some professionals uh, where they've taken a look, and then start working on me and my uh, driving. So uh, that's what we did. Unfortunately, after only one or two runs in the morning, the engine was cooking itself, and one of the hoses popped off. It was that hot. So we got it back in, we got it to cool down. Um, you can see uh, what looks like diarrhea uh, all over the place um, where the water came out. So you saw me clipping away at some uh, cable ties. That was our bodge uh, just to get me back out uh, and get some laps into my belt. What we're doing here is taking the radiator out, as you can see, because it's pretty, pretty knackered, as well as uh, the old fan uh, took chunks out of the thing. Um, it's a standard radiator, and we can do better. We can install a bigger radiator. Uh, we can replace some of those pipes, because they are the original pipes. Um, and if we're there, we might as well do the cam belt, because that's about four years old now and um, you'll see in a second it's a it was a pretty good show to do that uh, the water pump and the thermostat you might as well this was a bit scary for me i've never done a cam belt before and uh, with a lot of back and forth looking at the e30 zone um, i thought i'd uh, give it a go So far I've been trying to get a few bits and pieces out of the way. I think around this point I've realised that I'm not going to get the fan off because the uh, nut that you have to undo is either 32 or 34 mil, which needed a uh, visit to the shop. And um, yeah, there's the uh, distributor cap cover uh, coming out of the way. And the metal pipe section that joins the hoses at the front of the engine and as you can see that fan is scrap the thermostat housing has come off now and uh, I wasn't sure what I had in there, but I uh, was recommended to get a an 80 degrees opening thermostat. As it turns out, the one I took out was 80 degrees as well. But uh, yeah, it was a few years old, so may as well get replaced.
with the radiator upgrade, which is from a 324 turbo diesel, I believe. It uh, made a lot of sense to replace uh, quite a few of these parts, uh, the service items anyway, as I'm doing so much work on the cooling area, I might as well uh, refresh quite a bit of it. So I've known my intake hose has been dodgy for a while, it's had some cracks. Uh, recently my ICV valve has stopped working, maybe it's uh, overworked itself because of the uh, lack of vacuum. So um, there was only a few quid and uh, made sense to replace that as well. And while we're at it, let's do the air filter. And if you're wondering why I'm putting the screws back on, it's not because I've gone mad. Not yet, anyway. It's what I like to call lazy efficiency. Uh, rather than put these uh, bolts and screws in uh, a careful place, um, I'm not going to do that. I know I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lose them. So the best place for them is where they came from, if I ever can. And uh, that way I know where they go, because they're already there. This intake hose was about 10 15 pounds, so definitely worth replacing. Next, we're looking at some of the radiator hoses that I've bought uh, replacements for. Like I said, uh, going through this much effort to upgrade the cooling, there's no point in leaving. Uh, some of the big original horses on the car. So it's the following weekend and I've got my big massive spanner and uh, yeah, it's time for the van to come out. The pulley wheels now need to come out. I remember the bolts being a particular arse to get to. There's a slightly better shot of uh, what's going on. The timer belt cover, that was a bit more faff than I was expecting. It's in two parts and um, you've got to take them off in the right order. And if you're stuck like I was, check the alternator bolt 
because it does a, a few things and um yeah it's got a like a square nut in the middle somewhere and it stops part of the timing cover coming off that took me a little while to figure out That was the bolt there, so if no amount of turning uh, seems to be doing anything, then just check behind it, there should be a square nut. If you uh, keep that in place, then uh, you're golden. Okay, so this was an eye-opener. If you look at the front part of the belt, you can see some scoring, which, uh, yeah, that's, that's not good. So, um... That was a bit confusing. So what's probably happened during one of my many excursions to the gravel trap is a stone has got under the cover of the cam belt. This is uh, according to some of the other guys that race. It's quite a common occurrence. And as time goes by, obviously it wears cam belt. And now we're getting to the really scary part. We're taking off the cam belt tensioner. And yes, we're definitely at top dead center. I checked and I double checked and I then treble checked to make sure. I then went and had a cup of tea. I came back and I checked twice more. This was very scary for me. I have never done this before. One thing I'd point out is when you're turning the engine, to get uh, to top dead center it's a little bit of a weird sensation obviously you're out with gear and you, you're turning it and it gets tight and it gets tight and then suddenly it kind of you know goes again and that's, that's probably the uh, the pistons uh, compressing and then suddenly having a bit of a release when the valve opens The belt doesn't seem to go on that easily or as easily as I was expecting. It needs a bit of persuasion, but uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, we got there in the end. And if you come with me into the engine bay, we should find all the marks lining up. Alrighty then, moment of truth time. So as a final check to make sure everything is tickety-boo, uh, we're going to turn the engine a complete revolution. I'll speed this bit up a bit, uh, just to make sure that we don't find anything bending or crashing into each other and uh, if not then all is well and as a final check I'm making sure the cam pulley is bang on TDC as well Phew. and we're done so for the next video, I need to put the rest of the coolant system back together and put some coolant in it and, uh, yeah, fire it up and uh, keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. So, um, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, uh, ping them across. If I don't know the answer, I'll find somebody that does. Cheers.